Did you know that almost every basic operation on your phone or laptop involves different software that communicate with each other? For example, signing up with a new app is so much easier using your personal Facebook or Google account. Establishing connections between systems helps solve various convenience problems. Take the ordeal of manually adding songs found on YouTube to the Spotify library. Vicola Ayodeli, a Python software engineer, refusing to put up with this, synced her YouTube and Spotify accounts. Now every music video she likes automatically shows up on her Spotify. So how do programmers make software systems talk to each other? Let's zoom in on what's called an application programming interface, the technology that glues all the pieces of our digital universe together. What is an API? Look at how easily Hermione opens the door just by knowing the right magic spell. Similarly, a client system casts a spell on a server system and it performs what the client wants. This communication between two systems is possible thanks to the API. An API, or application programming interface, is like a language that two systems use to communicate. A client, say a weather mobile app, tries to figure out what the weather is today. It sends a request to a server over a specific address with a clear instruction, what's the weather in Madrid today, and shows an access key, a password. If the message is structured in a specific way, the weather API will understand it. Once the message is delivered, the API will return its response over the same channel. So, an API allows programmers to design systems that interact with the environment of another system, requiring little to no understanding of how this system works on the inside. Imagine a jukebox in the bar. You put a quarter in and pick a song from the title cards. Meanwhile, on the inside, a motorized arm lifts a disc and delivers it to the CD player. But you couldn't care less about that. Your favorite music is on, and that's all that matters. API history. APIs weren't invented so much as discovered in the late 60s. At that time, the concept of code reuse became a game changer in accelerating digital transformation. Libraries of code composed for its reuse and named subroutines naturally gave rise to APIs. The first subroutine library was an actual library of tapes. A computer operator used to take the tapes of the main programs and the tapes of the subroutines, combine them into a single tape using automatic punching equipment, and then feed it into the computer. Today, APIs connect all sorts of systems. API connection types. The most common pair of systems is a web client and a server. Known as a web API, it facilitates the exchange of formatted queries between clients, like web browsers or mobile applications, and servers. For example, we all use online shopping apps. We have such an app locally installed on our phones, but all its operations are actually processed on a remote server. So when you click the Buy button, the app sends a request to the server notifying it of your desire to make a purchase. Talking about client-server architecture, let's not forget about databases where the data actually resides. So, applications communicate with databases via APIs too. Programmers use these APIs to write unified queries for different databases. Any type of connection can be supported by an API. When you download Instagram or WhatsApp, it will ask for permission to access your camera and mic. When you press Enable, the app makes an access request to your camera, one of the services of your phone's operating system. So basically, that's an API powering the communication between an app and your Android or iOS. API principles. With time, the concept of an application programming interface was formed on a number of pillars that make an API today. First, an API gives access to another system, but only to a limited extent. It's like when you ask your neighbor for a cup of sugar. They let you in, but only to go to the kitchen and fill your measuring cup. All the other rooms are off limits. 
Similarly, an API will process your request but shield the system's sensitive rules and algorithms. Second, an API is system independent, meaning that system transformations won't affect how the API functions. Back to the jukebox example. Since the 1950s, this machine has undergone countless alterations that enable its present high-quality digital sound. Still, the end result remains the same. You pick a song, and then it comes out of the speakers. That's similar to how an API maintains the same interface, although there may have been changes in the system. Third, an API should be simple in use for those unaware of the underlying system setup. Quoting Joshua Block, a former Google architect, APIs should be easy to use and hard to misuse. It should be easy to do simple things, possible to do complex things, and impossible or at least difficult to do wrong things. That's where the API documentation comes in handy. Docs are the instructions on how to structure requests to another system so that it will understand the inquiry and respond to it. That's why it's the first thing software engineers turn to when they start working with an API. They use the API documentation to compose a request and send it to the system that processes it and returns the result. That's it. No messing with the inner parts. In 1994, Canadian software engineering pioneer David Parnas mused on the meaning of documentation for code reuse. Reuse is something that is far easier to say than do. Doing it requires both good design and very good documentation. Even when you see very good design, which is still infrequently, we won't see its components reused without good documentation. There are different ways of building an API. API design varies in terms of request and response structure and format. So developers pick this or that design strategy, considering the environment, programming language, available resources, and so on. Be on the lookout for our next video, where we'll spell out the major API architectural styles, including widespread REST, straightforward RPC, cumbersome SOAP, and hyped GraphQL.